Warning, this video talks about a comic book which features some pretty dark themes and cartoon violence. While I work hard to ensure that this channel is family friendly, we can't really talk about this comic without going deeper into some of those more adult themes. So viewer discretion is advised. This is the second part in a two-part series about Marvel's Alpha Flight and their visits to West Empton Mall. Alpha Flight made their first visit to West Empton Mall back in 1985. And if you haven't seen our video about that, you might want to go back and check out part one in this series before watching this video. Six years after Alpha Flight's first visit to Edmonton, they made a return to West Edmonton Mall in a four-part miniseries entitled Wrath of the Dream Queen. Unlike the previous installment, this version features all of Edmonton, as well as a few other locations. The team is now led by Vindicator, wife of the deceased Guardian. Part one of this miniseries largely touches on the background and the origin story of the series' villain, the Dream Queen. The Dream Queen is the daughter of a demon mother. She can manipulate the reality around her, as well as affect others' minds, forcing them to see things that aren't there and believe they are doing things in places that aren't real. Kind of like, you know, a, a dream. It's a long story, but part one of the comic series ends with the Dream Queen eventually escaping her dimension by forming a psychic link to the heroes known as Alpha Flight and attacking them in the process. She then hitches a ride and makes her escape. Luckily, when the Dream Queen ambushed Alpha Flight, she left them all alive, which is kind of odd because she's trying to kill them through this whole series. A few hours later, a team member arrives and they all wake up. They decide to go after the Dream Queen by flying to where she's decided to hatch her evil plan, Edmonton, Alberta. As mentioned, the Dream Queen can make people see anything, and for her first Edmonton victim, she makes her former driver walk into a meadow to pick some flowers. The Dream Queen makes her headquarters on top of one of Edmonton's towers. But which one is this? It's pretty easy to identify which other towers are in view. So if we use Google Earth to get us as close to this view as possible, and keeping in mind that we have to allow for some artistic leeway, it's a pretty good guess that she's in the TELUS building or the ATB building. So Alpha Flight is en route to Edmonton. When they're just over Calgary, the Dream Queen forces Sasquatch to steal Talisman's Coronet of Enchantment so she can use it to enhance her own powers. This results in a fight, and Sasquatch jumps from the jet directly into the Calgary Tower. Vindicator gives chase, and Sasquatch narrowly escapes down the elevator. Oh, and by the way, Sasquatch is in a woman's body now. You know, I just, I can't keep track of everything. Just, just go with me on this. Alpha Flight waits for her at the bottom, but Sasquatch is still being controlled by the Dream Queen and puts up one heck of a fight. Dream Queen gives her orders. Bring it to me. Find an automobile and come to Edmonton. Luckily, Snowbird stops Sasquatch and turns him back into his manly form, which apparently he desired. So, with the Dream Queen's spell over Alpha Flight temporarily broken, they get back on track and head for the City of Champions. She's in Edmonton and we'd better hurry. She's already taken over the city. Arnold Wilcox fills a sack with diamonds, thinking they have been bought. After it is full, he will deliver them to the woman in the penthouse. He doesn't question his actions. Ed Jones smiles proudly as he examines the three deers he just shot. He doesn't know he'll wake up soon holding his rifle. He doesn't know he'll be screaming. Amy Turner loves the bumper cars at the fair. She can hear the carnival music and smell the corn dogs from the nearby concession stand. Next, she thinks she'll try the tilt-a-wheel. And in her dark tower, the architect of this madness laughs and laughs. Her malevolent will goes out and touches the dark corner of people's minds, playing with them. She can feel the thoughts of Alpha Flight so far away. They grow closer by the second. It's time for the game to begin, she muses. The killing game. 
The third part of this four-part Dream Queen series opens with yet another country-specific superhero team, China Force. The Canadian government has taken one of them prisoner, but the rest of his team thinks he's a traitor. They've killed the Canadian agents and are taking their comrade back to China by plane. Unfortunately for them, their plane ride takes them directly over Canada's dream city, Edmonton, Alberta, and directly into the circle of influence belonging to the Dream Queen. Looking out the window, China Force sees their homeland of China. However, one of them sees the truth. They're landing on what must be White Mud Drive. The Dream Queen now has a super team under her control, a super team to battle Alpha Flight. Alpha Flight, who is also en route to Edmonton. Now, the Dream Queen's powers over Alpha Flight may have been temporarily broken, but she can once again alter their reality. We're almost over Edmonton, folks. You can see it on the screen. You need to head toward downtown. That's where she's located. You got it, Elizabeth. Madison, I told you to head downtown. You're too far west. What are you talking about? I'm going the way you said. She's right, Madison. That's the West Edmonton Mall ahead. We're at least 15 miles off course. You're crazy. That's downtown. It's the Dream Queen. She's making you see something that's not there. Their plane crashes through the ceiling of the World Water Park and into the Blue Thunder Wave Pool. Alpha Flight is shaken, but they are able to swim to shore. Where is everybody? This place should be packed on a Saturday. Luckily for everyone who wasn't in that wave pool, the Dream Queen had somehow cancelled the weekend crowds. From her tower overlooking downtown Edmonton, the Dream Queen can see Alpha Flight and poison their minds. Just like she has with the rest of the Edmonton population. In the lobby of my building, the people of Edmonton bring me their gems as tribute, not knowing they're living in a waking dream. They think they are dumping their garbage, if they only knew the truth. In the streets, men racked with violent dreams stalk among their victims with dripping axes and smoking guns. The twitching bodies that still live dream their worst fears while their lives seep away into the crimson asphalt. In the suburbs, people act out their darkest fantasies, taking care of that nagging spouse or unruly child without realizing it's for real. The water's still running, but no one's here. I remember when I was a kid and they first opened this place. My mother brought me here and I rode the slides for hours. Suddenly, Alpha Flight is attacked by China Force, who all happen to have code names based on the Chinese Zodiac. The battle between superheroes in Edmonton's World Water Park.
Alpha Flight opens a portal to China and sends China Force back home. Recovering from battle, they catch their breath, open a gateway to downtown Edmonton, and go after the Dream Queen. Twilight falls over Edmonton. On Jasper Avenue, those who can still walk shamble up and down the street, dreaming awake. Something has taken over the city. Their minds are full of dark visions. Blood and pain, sorrow and confusion. These are the things that fill their thoughts. Only the circle of fire can save them. It grows from the mind of a young girl, part of a group of fantastical beings. And they come to do battle. It all started around 12 o'clock this afternoon. Planes flying into Edmonton weren't reporting back on the radio. The telephone company started getting complaints from people trying to call into the area. No one was picking up their phones. We sent a team to check it out. They never reported back. They never came out. Then we noticed the area was growing. More towns seemed to fall into this zone of silence. Cars and trucks entering the zone aren't coming out. The roads from the zone are empty. We got people on the ground, we got cars crashed into walls, some people seem to be shambling around on foot like zombies. We're not sure if this is some sort of plague or chemical problem, but it's starting to spread. Whether we like it or not, gentlemen, Alpha Flight is our only hope. Alpha Flight has arrived in downtown Edmonton, ready to do battle with the Dream Queen. They enter the tower and discover jewels which Edmontonians have brought. Talisman suggests they split up and search for the Dream Queen, and that she will go alone. Arriving on the 10th floor, Sasquatch, in human form, suddenly sees team member Aurora sitting in a restaurant. He takes a seat, only to find out everything may not be as it seems. Elsewhere, Vindicator is tied up by that monster from Little Shop of Horrors. I'm just a mean green mother from outer space and I'm bad. I'm just a mean green mother from outer space and it looks like you've been had. The Dream Queen is being confronted by Talisman, and despite being held by some shirtless muscle men, and that guy who's... what's that guy doing? Just watching? Anyways, she's able to break free and Alpha Flight helps send the Dream Queen back to the dimension from which she came. After defeating the Dream Queen and saving Edmonton, and the rest of North America, the Canadian military offer to help Alpha Flight once again. But Alpha Flight doesn't want that. Instead, they take up residence in Edmonton. Thanks to an offer from the mayor of Edmonton. Their new headquarters becomes Maison Alpha, located at number 4, Sir Winston Churchill Square. In reality, that location today is home of the Windspear Center. So, the next time you're watching your favorite superhero movie, remember, the next flick that Marvel decides to make might just be about the Great White North superhero team. A superhero team which saved Edmonton and West Edmonton Mall, not once, but twice. A superhero team whose leader wears the red and white of our national flag. Canada's own Alpha Flight. Do you hope Alpha Flight gets their own movie one day? Would saving West Edmonton Mall make for a good film? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel, give us a like, and a share. West Edmonton Mall's comic book connections aren't over yet. Check out this video, documenting Archie's own Betty and Veronica, and their visit to the greatest indoor show on Earth, West Edmonton Mall. Oh, and thanks for watching.